So now let's take a look at Dreamweaver. We'll go ahead and open that back up again. And now we need to understand how to actually set up your site inside of Dreamweaver. Now once we set up our site, we're going to do everything from that particular panel. If I need to add files, if I need to add a folder or move things around, I want to do that inside of my files view so that Dreamweaver knows where things are at and it can help update my links for me. So over on the right hand side of my panel, I see my files panel. In my files panel, right now, mine says desktop. I see my computer, I see my network, etc. So I can either click on this little button over here to the side that says manage sites, or this is also a drop down menu. If I click on it and I move all the way to the bottom, it says manage sites. Go ahead and click on that. Once this dialog box pops up, I want to create a new site. So I'm going to go ahead and click on new. If you have used Dreamweaver CS4, you'll notice that this dialog box has changed quite a bit. It's much simpler than it was in CS4. This is where I can initially name my folder. So the site that we're going to be working with is a photography user group website. So I'm just going to call this user group just to make it simple. What I name this here doesn't matter at all in the long run. It's just really for me to know what this particular site definition is for. I now need to show Dreamweaver where my root folder is. So if I click on this little button right here and I can browse for that particular folder, I'm going to go to my desktop where my project files are. I'm going to go into my project files. I'm going to click once on chapter three or on the Mac, I can click on chapter three and say choose. On the PC here, I can either say open or I can right click and say select. Then I can choose select here and now that will be my path. So my desktop and my project files. I'm going to go to my server setup here. If I click on a little plus sign here, I get to choose what type of server that I have. Is it connected by FTP, local network, RDS? So if I just choose FTP for a moment here, this is going to be our most common type of connection to our remote server. I would give it a server name, my FTP address. So depending on who is hosting your site, your FTP address may be different. It could be a number, it could be FTP dot whatever the site is, it could also just be www dot whatever the site name is dot com. I will have a username, I will have a password. Again, that is given to you by the host, whoever is hosting your website root directory is the files that you're going to be working with inside of Dreamweaver. So for instance, I may have a much more complicated site in PHP, etc. I may not need to see all of those particular files that are associated with it. So my root directory may be a forward slash and whatever the file structure is, maybe www where the actual HTML files are. Once I put in my FTP address, I will also have a web URL specified here. Why I need to do this, or why that should be put in into this particular window, is so that Dreamweaver can help me later on in making sure that all of my links are set up and I can do a site-wide report on my root folder and all my files. If I click on More Options, I'm able to see, I'm going to move my window up just a little bit here, I'm able to see if I need to use a passive FTP, particular protocols, do I need to use an alternative method. Most of the time you won't need to choose these, but if you do, your host should be able to help you with those. If I click on my advanced tab up here, I can have more information about my remote server. Do I need to maintain synchronization information? What that is going to do for me is be able to synchronize date-wise my files on my local machine as opposed to the files on my remote server 
and it will help me keep those up to date so I can make sure that the correct files are in both places. I can, if I would choose, automatically upload files on server on save. Personally, I don't like this checked just because I like a little more control and put the files over on the server when I am ready for those files to be on the server. Otherwise, on save, it's going to just automatically move that file over onto your remote server. You can also enable file check-in and check-out. Now let me click this just for a moment so we can talk about it. This is great if you're working with a team in multiple locations. So for instance, if I am in San Francisco and I have part of my team over on the East Coast, I put my checked out name, I put my email address in so that when I check out a file, somebody can open it and they can look at it and read it and they know that I particularly have it checked out and then they know not to work on that particular file. It's a locked file, it's a read-only file, and nobody can overwrite it. If I have a local folder, let's say we're all in the same location and I'm using checked in and checked out, I can actually override it doesn't lock me out of the file. I can open it up, but I at least know that somebody is working on the file at that particular time and I won't make any changes. I can set up my testing server from here. So for instance, I can set up a model for ASP, .NET, Cold Fusion, PHP, JSP, etc. What this will do is, let's say I'm working with a Cold Fusion site. ColdFusion is a way to work with a back-end file. If I'm working with a site that needs some interactivity and a database, I am probably going to need to set up a testing server. So I would set up my testing server so I can actually see what those pages are doing in Dreamweaver. If I don't set up a testing server, I can't actually see what's going on with my files. I'll see that it is, let's say, a ColdFusion file and I'll see the elements that have Cold Fusion applied to them. The elements that don't have Cold Fusion applied to them, I actually will see in my window, but if I don't set up a testing server, I can't actually preview what those files are going to look like. We're going to go ahead and click on Cancel. We're not going to set up an FTP server at the moment. I also have version control. Version control is great. Dreamweaver uses Subversion, and it's been enhanced in CS5. I can click on Access and use Subversion. And again, we won't be setting this up at just the moment. We will after a while, but I can give my protocol, whether it's going to be HTTP, SVN, HTTPS, give it a server address, a repository path, username, and password, and I can test it. And this has, again, been enhanced for CS5. Since we won't be setting up Subversion right now, we're going to go back to our access and say none for the moment and go ahead and twirl down the arrow for your advanced settings. The first one is local info. So I can choose where my default images folder is going to be. Next we'll look at relative links too. This is actually very important when working inside of Dreamweaver. Because you can accidentally move entire folders around, we want to make sure that your links are relative to your document and not to your site root. Your site root would then be your machine, where it's located at, what user, etc. We don't want to accidentally move anything, and there are times when you need to move a folder. So that way our entire root folder can be moved to a different location. We can go back up to our normal site and tell Dreamweaver where that root folder is but at least the files inside that we're working with are going to be relative to one another. So for instance, if I have my home page and my about page, if it's in the same directory, it's in the same root folder, the same file structure, then when I link to my about page from my home page, it's just going to be about.html or whatever your extension is. If it were relative to my site root, then it's going to be, again, you know, your hard drive, what user you are, etc., and then things can be broken a whole lot easier. This is another place I can make sure I put my web URL again so that I can make sure that Dreamweaver can do my site reports, etc. 
I have a cloaking tab. My cloaking tab allows me to enable cloaking files ending with, and if I click this, I can see that I don't necessarily want to choose an FLA, although I can use a PSD file. So if I delete that one, then only the files ending with an um, FLA, and maybe I put um, AI in here for my Illustrator files. That way that I can't actually use those, those will be um, X'd out, and I won't be able to drag those um, into my design. Design notes. Design notes are a way, especially if I'm working with a remote group of people, a remote team, I can share notes that go along with particular files. I can attach them to files so that way, let's say if I'm not done with my about page, I can add a design note to my about page that when they open it, that the note opens as well. I can maintain my design notes. I can clean up my design notes because if I have a site that I'm now going to put up to a remote server, it's going to go live. I don't necessarily need all those design notes then, so Dreamweaver allows you to be able to clean those up so they're not all on the server. My files view column. This is simply a way that I can move things around that I use the most. So I definitely want to see the name. I may have notes or I may not. Personally, I like being able to see my modified next. So if I then choose modified, I can move this up in my list so then that is the next option next to my name. Size, types, etc. And I could always add a column from here as well. My Contribute tab. If I enable Contribute, then it enables me to set up for whatever end user is going to be using Contribute the parts of the page that they can update themselves. Remember, we also have in-context editing, so you have your choice of whether you want to choose Contribute or in-context editing to help them set up those files. Certainly, that's not your only choice, but those are your choices within Dreamweaver itself. If I have any templates, don't want to rewrite relative document paths, and simply if I have Spry and I want to use Spry widgets, I can specify where those assets are stored, and looks like they're stored just fine for now. So now I'm just going to click on my Save button. It's going to cache my site. I see that in this particular dialog box, I see my name in there now, and now I can click Done. In my Files panel, you'll now see all of my folders, etc. So we can see this a little bit better. I'm going to have you click on a button over on the right-hand side in that particular panel. This little button right here underneath where it says Local View At is going to expand my Files view. When I click on it, on the PC, it will take over my whole entire page. On the Mac, it will just open up in its own window. Now I can see my remote files view and my local files view.